All right, here we go. Frozen All Temple. All right. Spotting at the bottom right of Frozen Temple, representing the University of Central Florida, we have your man, Blast. Dylan, go. And in the top left, representing the University of Florida in the blue, Taryn, Begby. So what do you predict on this map, Dylan? Um, Build-wise, or who's going to take it? Uh, well, let's start with who's going to take it, then build, build. I think who's going to take it, probably Begby. Uh, I know mm. that Blast definitely does not like this map versus Terran, uh, yeah. because it is very easy to be for the for the Terran to be very aggressive. Yeah, that third is super exposed, that fourth is super exposed. You definitely get spread thin when you're trying to protect all your bases as a Zerg player. Yeah, absolutely. And there's Blast once again with that early uh, scouting drone. Most Zerg players don't do this anymore, but Blast definitely does it. He... He has some sort of traumatic experience against three Rex Reapers, so he just wants to make sure it never happens he's again. Not, he's actually doing something else. Uh, he, yeah, was, he, he was talking to me about this before the game, and he's going to steal the gas. He's going to steal the gas. Actually, he did again. He did this against me, too, on this exact same map. <laughs> forced me to change my build order, and uh, yeah. I, I did not like that. So taking this gas will prevent Begby from, it, from doing any sort of early tech shenanigans. He can't do Cloak Banshee. He can't do Tank of X, at least not for a good while. Uh, this means uh, Beg B is left with uh, very limited options. He can either go for uh, you know a, a fast triple CC build and try to play an economic game. Maybe he could go for Reactor Hellions because that doesn't require that much gas. Uh, but after the Reactor Hellions, he's going to need some sort of transition. And I've noticed this coming from Beg B a lot. He likes to build his command center inside of his base when most people, uh, most players these days, they don't. They they opt to just build it outside their base because they know that they can they can protect their command centers from any sort of early Ling aggression as long as they just get that first Reaper out in time. Yeah, it's a safer bet. Um, you are very exposed uh, in your natural to early aggression and just getting that getting the inside base instead of laying it down on the natural. It, it could save you time. It could save you a loss. And now we have Blast getting the speed. And I noticed that Bigby actually, instead of just going for the Reaper, went straight for Marines, saving gas for that factory, so it's not too delayed, and those Marines are going to be able to take down that extractor. Now we have Blast getting the scout with his Overlord, seeing that those Marines are there might be able to take it down, uh, actually. This, this hurts. Yeah. Is the Overlord going to get away? Oh, but it has so far to go I before he can get out of the vision. On the other side already. Right, yeah, in fact, uh, he's he got links on the way to try to intercept the marines, but I mean, with Begby's micro, he should be fine. Four links can't take down three marines very easily. Yeah, unless the uh, Unless the Terran player just decides to not pay attention, just let him die. Yeah, and he's going for a bunker in his base, kind of fearing some aggression, seeing those links and that overlord. Um, Begby's playing a little scared, honestly. Um, Be Begby did do this uh, he last time against Blast too. The, these two these two players played last night during the uh, round robin stages, and uh, Begby, on this exact same map, went for bunkers because uh, he was afraid that Blast was going to do some sort of baneling bust all in. But uh, Blast isn't. That's not what he's going for at all. He's just comfortably playing a normal game right now. One thing we can say for Begby though is um, he didn't uh, react as as much as he did before. He actually had two bunkers before. Yeah, I think even an extra rack. This time he only built the other bunker. Savages it, so not too much of a waste. I'm um, gonna be landing his natural and building his third now. But it looks like uh, Begby is gonna go for the tank of ac, uh push here. Uh, even with that second gas stolen, it looks like Begby, uh, he knows the kind of build order that he wants to go for and the kind of game that he wants to play in this uh, early game stage. Yeah. Uh, still no third here from Blast, so it looks like he's not going to be trying to go for any sort of greedy build anytime soon. Yeah, Blast tends to uh, delay that third just a little bit, getting that spine up, getting that Roach Warren. He just wants to be super defensive, get, the, get that drone count up, get a few units out just in case he needs to defend against any aggression and then he'll slowly take that third as he's getting lair. Oh wow! Uh, this is actually a great scout here for Blast. He sees the tech lab on the starport. He knows that it's going to be Banshee. The tech lab itself isn't spinning though so this isn't going to be a cloaked Banshee push here from uh, from Begby. It looks like he's just gonna try to pressure a little bit here and there with a Banshee but uh, he's not committing fully into a Cloak Banshee kind of build. And yeah, just to me it looks like him looking for an easy win if uh, Flask goes for like some aggression with Bridge League, he'll have a Banshee in the air without Cloak. Not a big investment defensive-wise, and I think that that's a good idea if you want to play defensive. But he's also like, 
he, he already has a tank, so it's kind of like... Yeah, it's a lot of gas it. going yeah. into two units that essentially can do the same thing. Yeah. He, would, he would have had a faster skin if he wouldn't have... Uh, is Stim already on the way? Stim is already yeah, on the way, already. and Begbie must be feeling pretty darn good about the fact that Blast's third is just now coming up while his uh, third OC just finished, and uh, he should be able to take the third base pretty soon. Absolutely. But I, I love how I love how safe Begbie's playing this first game. He's still he's got bunkers up at the front. He's got a bunker towards the back. He's just trying to make sure he doesn't die to any sort of uh, unscouted two base all in aggression. Well, I honestly think it might be too safe because it's gonna. I feel like he just doesn't have the units required to defend at third base, so I don't imagine him actually landing that third for quite a bit. And now we have, as soon as this third hatch is done from last, it's probably gonna be fully saturated. What? Well, 40, 40, 43 drones on the map right now. And is he droning? Or no, he's, he's, roaches. he's yeah. actually building roaches. He's making roaches. Yeah, this is just a fake from him. Yeah. And I think Begbie recognizes that. If I'm not mistaken, blasted this building with him already, and he's kind of reading into it. He, ha he has the Banshee, which, if he doesn't lose it, will be great at defending this roach aggression. Yeah, it's going to be able to take pot shots right in the middle of the map. Hopefully, he doesn't uh, run it into a bunch of queens and loses the Banshee needlessly. Um, I, I did speak to Begbie while we were grabbing a lunch at Zaxby's, and I said, what's your game plan against Blast? And he said, I'm just going to play super space, super safe, <laughs> because because I know Blast is a very aggressive kind of player. Yeah. Now, Gleal Reconstitution is about to finish up. Perfect timing. Here comes a Banshee just to maybe delay this aggression, but see how much damage it can do. You should be seeing this drum count right now and getting going like, okay, he's attacking me, send yeah. the Banshee back home. And just defend. He has a second bunker, which is really nice. Unless he salvaged it, I hope he didn't. But he, did yep, he still has it, which will be great for the defense to tank. Mm -hmm. His position in a great spot. Yeah. As long as he's paying attention with his medevac, this shouldn't be an issue. He shouldn't be able to lose it. And I mean, he even scans the main. I don't know why. He should know that this ha this is coming with air. And that bunker falls almost immediately. No repair. A skin yeah. that doesn't really accomplish anything. He needs to have those. Those, uh, nice shots. Yeah. We have a liberator that started to go uh, towards the, position, the natural. Yeah, the position here. Back. The position here for Begbie is just far too good. It's going to be very difficult for Blast to even try to break this, even with Queen transfusions. He's got tank on the high ground. He's got a liberator position right in the front. Blast is going to commit to the attack, but he's just going to lose too much. Get and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Begbie decided to move out and chase down this very fragile and vulnerable Zerg army. As a Zerg player, one one's about to right finish. Now? So. Just drone, contain and drone, and not stop making units pretty much and prepare a transition because Blast is not going to break this. I yeah, mean, this is Marine tank with a bunker. Yeah, Blast is still making roaches. Stim has finished combat shield on the way. It looks like the Terran player is just really ahead right now. If the Zerg player is not able to break through this defense, then he is going to be just far too behind to get back into the game. Yeah, like 1 1's done for Begbie, and it's not even started for Blast. Yeah, Blast so. is just now getting his double evil chamber, now finally starting to drone. But yeah, was that I really like worth it? Begbie. That drop is going to be so good because he knows that he has this defensive position. He's going to try and have, force a reaction from Blast. Either go in, all in, with his Rudge Rouger, or go back home and lose too many drones. Two Evo Chambers, eight minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Still no upgrades here for Blast. Blast's opting just now to start mass, uh, mass drone pr production, but right as that's happening, the drop is going towards the third of, of Blast. Yeah, this drop should be able to do a decent amount of damage. Good overload creep from Blast, but will he be able to clean this up without losing too much? Yeah, the well, whole, he, he whole is, army has He to runs the back. queen away and runs the drones away, so he hasn't lost anything yet. The hatchery and spore colony, spore collar took some damage, but that's not much. Yeah, I, mean, I think the nice thing about this is that he broke the contain. He can finally kill that overload at the third if he's paying attention. And his third. Uh, yeah, it does. It, yeah, out. it does seem like Begbie's taking a little too long to get grab this third right now. He's uh, he's I'm a little slow on clearing the creep. I'd like to see him try and take his third, and I'd like to see him scan the natural, just so he knows that. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that plus range, okay. plus eight range queen. Oh my goodness, that plus eight range queen. Just so, just so he sees that Hive is not on the way, because I don't think Hive is on the way. I can't see for the Uh, The infestation pit's like three quarters done. Yeah, so he should see, kind of see that Hive is uh, coming soon. And she, he should, I, I know he has two teal on the way, he should try and hit the crisp two two timing, try and kill him, start cleaning up that creep. Shouldn't attack him at all right now, I think. Just take advantage of the upgrade that he's about to have. But, I mean, he's gonna have to do this one-one roach ravager without investors, uh, and because Blast is gonna be inf investing in that hive, and ultra scattering, he won't be able to afford much other than that. I mean, he doesn't have a fourth base. 
uh, saturated. I mean, he doesn't, he's there, he's barely getting saturated until now. I mean, 57 drones is a pretty abysmal drone count considering that Begbie has 66 XTVs on three base and he's adding three racks with tech laps right now. But I'd say Begbie is in a great position in this game. Yeah, he Begbie. just needs to buy his time right now. Yep, Hive now starting for uh, uh, Blast, so he's wanting to get that tech the, With the Hive being so late, then that means Begbie has a lot of time before he has to worry about that Ultralist tech. And now he's going for a drop here. He definitely going to be able to put a cancel on this fourth hatch. If Blast doesn't respond in time, actually a little late there on the stim from Begbie, and he's actually going to have to retreat and giving three marines away for free. Looks like there's a couple of medevacs um, right over there. Oh no, those, no, are those were those were the <laughs> two marines he sent earlier. I would like to see sure uh, Begbie kind of clear the creep in the middle. Yeah, he definitely. That's where he's going to be pushing. Yeah. Um, the, the, the tank marine push on this map. It, it it's does really strong because there's this pocket. Where the tanks can sit and they can kind of hit everything in between the natural and the third and kind of control that zone. But instead, Baby is going to go for the fourth, and I don't really like that because killing the fourth is not really a worry. It's not yeah. really a victory. It's a small victory, but it's not as big a victory because I mean, Ultralisk the Cavern should be on the way. I see how it's done. Yeah, it's yeah. done. And I mean, two two just started for Blast, and mm -hmm. two two is finishing up for Begby, or actually plus three already started. Yeah. So Begby is having a great done. timing here. He has tanks, he has Marines. With proper micro, there's no reason he should lose this fight. He should actually be able to win the game right now. It this did. is a strong army with two two versus yeah. just one one. And here we go. This could be the battle that decides the victor of the game. One minute that going down. It seems uh, positioning wise, uh, Begby. Yeah, this arm is melting. It's just yeah. Supply advantage from Begby right now. Uh, Up forty supplies. Great microbes. Aaron All the rappers don't him. have any roaches in and, the hand, and that's GG. And GG. Begby will take the first victory and this best of. Five series. Now, it, it did feel like Begbie was uh, being a little too passive, uh, not being as aggressive as he could, not not pushing, getting rid of the creep. Uh, but yeah. it just didn't matter. He just had way too much of an advantage. He had the upgrade advantage. He had the army supply advantage. Yeah, I, I definitely think he shouldn't have attacked before 2 2, but he should have been able to clean up some creep. You know, dropping on the side when he was doing that double yeah. medevac drop, it wouldn't have hurt him. There's definitely move, more he could have done. Yeah, to move up, to, up the middle and kind of clear that creep. That's really all he can do before 2 2 because. Uh, even one more Marines aren't that are go back to Starcraft. They're, I think they're yeah. better against. Yeah, uh, yeah, again, one more Marines are better than zero zero Rush Ravager, but it's not as big a difference as two two versus one one. Mm. Uh, I really like everyone says that Rush Ravager is only strong against Bio when it has the upgrade lead two two versus one one. But when Marine have the Marine tank has the upgrade okay. lead, sure. it's just getting destroyed. It's, they're going to get destroyed. It's absolutely demolished every time. So I, I like that Begby waited for that 2 2 and then hit that timing. And I mean, you guys saw how that Roach Ravager army melted. Mm. It's yeah. just not even close. So is it safe to say that uh, Begby probably read Blast very well in that first game? He learning. just had everything ready for that aggression that Blast likes to do. Yeah, learning from his first series for sure. Because he played really safe, got that Banshee just in case originally aggression came. It didn't come, took the third. He saw no drones and just. Play defensive from there, and got his upgrades, got his, his uh, infrastructure up, was preparing to take that third, and as soon as he got the third, he got the economy to use that infrastructure and got the better army. Now for uh, for those of you watching, we just finished game one of this best of five series between Begbie and Blast. Game one was on Frozen Temple, the Terran player was able to take the victory there. This is the Florida Star Cup number one, we are in the playoffs. We have our final four from the round robin stages of last night. We're just waiting to start this game too. That's going to be on Galactic Process. Now we've already seen some several. We've seen several Terran versus Zergs already on uh, 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 TVZ matches on, on Galactic Process already, and uh, uh, they've been quite interesting. Uh, this is still a, a new map that's trying to be figured out by players all around. And uh, you know, how, how, how do you feel about it as a fellow, as a Zerg player? How, how do you feel about this map for uh, Blast? Personally, I don't like this map, but I know that he does. So, um, I don't know. I don't have too much experience on this map. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. And as a Terran player, Havoc, how do you feel about this map? Uh, I totally have a veto. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, understandable. To understandable. Me, the, the second and third are way too easy to take, and as a Terran you want to be very aggressive early on, um, and there's just 
But you don't have to spread too thin, um, protecting a third and a fourth in this map when it comes to going against Protoss or Zerg. So honestly, I veto this map. Alright, well let's go ahead and do some player introductions. Unfortunately, not able to take the victory in game one. Can he bring it back to tie up the series? It is going to be Legion of Fallen's Blast. And spawning in the top right of Galactic Process, representing the University of Florida, up 1-0 against Blast, we have Begbie. Now, I gotta say, the game one, uh, it was very exciting. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun seeing the mind game between these two players. Blast thinking that, uh, well, the build worked before, why not try it again and see if I can catch Begbie off guard. Begbie thinking to himself, well, I... I lost to it before, so this time I'm going to play it much safer and make sure I don't die to some gimmicky all-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good reading from Begbie. Um, let's see what Blast is going to do this time. Maybe something. Maybe, I honestly believe he should just try and play safe this time. Maybe try go for that quicker high, so just playing defensive. It looks like maybe Blast wants to steal the gas again and try to force uh, Begbie to play a different build. Very well could. Depending on... It doesn't really matter what... Uh, Build blast is going for you doing this. Uh, Begby tries works. to block, but Begby try to not keep. Able to get it. Begby try to put an SCV there at the Vespian geyser to try to prevent that extractor from being built. But blast does able to pull it off. Yeah, actually, an easy way to stop that. You don't even have to build the refinery earlier. You just have to place the SCV close enough. Mm. Just click on clicking on it will make the SCV prevent any dropping oh, of the extractor. You? Sure. Don't know where. Oh, I, okay, I know. Yeah, it is. okay. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Don't worry about it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know what it is now. It's a candle that's burning. We're, yeah. we're casting and the house casters on fire. It's okay, we can still cast. Yeah. We still got some time fight. before the firemen get here. So yes. Bigby going ahead, building those marines instead of the reaper so he can take down this extractor just a bit faster. Doing the same build as before, getting that natural in-base factory coming up now. And he should be able to get his second gas uh, not too late. Oh, interestingly enough, Blast deciding to grab the third base much, much quicker uh, than he normally does this time around. Yeah, as I said, this map is just so much better when it comes to getting that third base and securing it, so I, I don't see why not. Begbie once again opting not to go for a Reaper, he's just going to go for Marines right off the bat and get his factory up. Once again, building that command center inside of his base now. As a Terran player, uh, I feel like you just you lose a lot of time uh, flying that OC over. Would he be better off just building it outside of his base? Honestly, the the difference in between is somewhat minute. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it because, especially against a player like Blast, sometimes you just want to take those ex extra precautions. And in a tournament setting, a best of five, why not? You're not going to lose that much mining time, but you know it could prevent a win. You are absolutely right about that. And it looks like Begbie's going for Hellions, getting that starport. Are we going to see Cloak Banshee from him this time? He's actually building Widow Mines. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I believe he's going for Marine Widow Mine Drop. Uh, I meant... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> those, uh, <clears throat> those Hellions can burrow underground and do a lot of splash damage. Um, and uh, those Widow Mines are really fast and shoot flames. You like and... a shredder in it? That could have been. <laughs> Oh, the Shredder would have been amazing <laughs> had Blizzard decided to keep that change. Ridiculous. Anyway, we have Blast killing these rocks a little bit, a few lings ahead of time. So we won't have to worry about maybe go for a few counterattacks later in the game. Begby going for that medvac now. Should, should be able to at least put on some harassment. So it looks like what Begby is going to go for is that six marine widow mine push that he's we've seen him do before. Um, it's not terribly effective if he doesn't position the Widow Mine correctly, though. Uh, last time we saw him do this build, the Widow Mine kind of backfired, shot all his Marines because of the friendly damage, and uh, uh, we, we know that, that the attack didn't play out very well. But Begby still won that game. Uh, he was still able to take the victory because uh, you know, he just he read the game very well and understood what he had to do. Also note that the Roche 4 and 4 Blast is a bit later than you normally want to be getting it if you're playing safe. Um, yeah. it, it, it just started about 20 seconds ago. Um, so if Begby hits now, which looks like the medevac is on a beeline towards the third, um, Blast will have a bit of difficulty defending it, especially now that the Roche Warren is done, he's not making roaches. 
Well, he, he built a flood maybe of 20 lings, so if he's in position, maybe he'll be able to stop it, but yeah, if those but lings take a, bad, take a bad position, it's... this. Yeah, you know, the lings are moving a Blast, across the map right now. Blast doesn't yeah. really have many drones here, so uh, this is actually good for him. He's not going to be losing that many drones. He's actually going to be retreating them as soon as he sees this drop coming in. The Widowmine is burrowed, uh, but Begbie decides to lift it before he can waste a shot on maybe larvas. I think... Uh, what, what I oh! Oh, oh beautiful nice, pickup nice pick there up. from Begbie and kills a bunch of lings in the process of with the middle mine. The overseers are here to take out the mine. Looks like he won't be getting that back. I would have picked up that widow mine. Fail. Picking up the widow, <laughs> <laughs> picking, up the, picking up the widow mine would have made this drop just very successful. Oh, and a liberator pressure here from the side and actually getting a queen. Uh, but the queen over here uh, positioned very well. Kills the Liberator. Kills at least three Four workers there. kill for Begbie. What I, that's what I don't like about the link defense. You guys mentioned he has no drones on his third. And when you go for the Roach defense, you can get like six, seven Roaches with Ravagers and defend yeah. that really easily. And those Ravagers also help you defend that Liberator. Instead, when the links, when you make links, the Widowmine trades really well with links. Not so much with Roach Ravager. You can pick off on what Widowmine with two Ravager shots. They kind of see like these Marines are punishing him for making links. Links are on the other side of that trying to counter. There are new units here. The drones are getting killed. Uh, drones aren't mining. The links come back and he's just going to lift and leave. He's like, bye. And probably just go in the main. Yep, going into the main. Uh, Stimpak almost done for Begbie. So. Stimpak almost done. Plus one, plus one on the way for Begbie as well. Meanwhile, Blast, uh, double Evo, but no upgrades coming in from him yet. I think Begbie's in, once again, a pretty good spot. And Stim has finished for Begbie now, which means very soon he could move out and apply even more pressure upon the Zerg player, uh, doing a great job of clearing the creep, and now he's going to land a third. The Zerg player is in a lot of trouble. He's, he's definitely playing uh, from behind, and he's constantly being forced to stay at home to try to defend these annoying drops from Begbie. Uh, the fourth coming in down for Blast. Is it safe to say that uh, that fourth is a little late? And, um, uh, it might be a little later than what he wanted. He definitely only just saturated that third. Mm -hmm. um, that, fourth, that fourth is late. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like uh, uh, for Zerg, optimal timing is to build your fourth as the third OC is uh, either being being uh, built or uh, landing. Oh, no, being lifted. I think I think six minutes is a pretty good fourth timing. Mean, yeah. Uh, it's like 5:45. The third CC should be landing. 5:30. 5:40. And at like 6, you want that 4th base. Oh, and Blast actually, uh, he's supply blocked right now. He seems to have lost the, the Overlord that he kept here for scouting purposes. Which is not good because Begbie is getting ready to move out. And right now, Blast needs to, needs to he needs supply. He needs to get more army out. Yeah, he's wanting a lot of money. Begbie's hitting with 1-1. Uh, one, one, and Blast's 1-1 one, one is still on it's, the way. It's only halfway done, which means Begbie has a ridiculously good timing that could really cripple the Zerg. In, in fact, if Begbie has... Proper micro, he could even win the game right here, right now. There are no banelings in this army. Yeah, but this is a huge army. Oh, it is a it is a big army. Yeah, and he's Begby able to protect that fourth. And actually, Begby, uh, his army not as big as I thought it would be. Yeah, gonna get a few of these marines. Yeah, in fact, yeah, as that fourth was building, he was just fo and he, he saw this push coming um, when at, when he lost that overlord. So he just focused on ravagers and roaches. Um, decent defense, but losing some mining time over here. Definitely lost a. a few more workers too. Uh, Blast trying to put on some pressure at the front, loses these lings. But now Blast just wants to put on more pressure. Not opting to really go for that faster hive. The rocks are going to be destroyed, but he's got tanks in place. This is a bad idea for Blast if he decides to move up the ramp. Dropping of 10 tankslings that are all going to die to siege tanks. Only two tank shots, and they're all gone. Inefficient changeling use of it. <laughs> and the fourth base is up for Blast, but he has yet to transfer drones and fully saturate and take advantage of this fourth base right now. Army supply 85 to 94, 151 supply to 155 supply. Both players pretty darn evenly matched right now, but like we said before, Terran player with the upgrade advantage, and it seems Blast is going to have to do a lot to try to prevent Begbie from moving out and, and trying to finish the game. Looks like we have an uh, infestation pit started about halfway done for Blast, that's so a, that's he, an empty minute. <laughs> he is. <laughs> that's extra healing, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so Blast is wanting to go up to uh, Hive Tech now, um, and he's gonna need it soon because uh, Begri's army is just getting uh, better and better, whereas his Roach Ravager army, it, it gets better, but like the scaling is not that good. Yeah, right now Blast just needs to focus on defending this 4th and 3rd base. Get to that high as quick as possible, but Ooh, so far not drums. so well. 
The drop's actually doing a lot of damage, forcing Blast to move, move his drones from the minerals. He's losing mining time, he's losing time trying to clear up this drop. Double drop from the third base and the fourth base. Tons of damage being dealt here by Begbie. Yeah, 21 yeah, total that's workers that's killed this game, and now he's getting ready to move out with another ridiculously strong army. Plus two has finished for the Terran player, plus two has not finished for the Zerg player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this attack is going to hurt, um, unless Blast manages to get a good position against his army. Oh, and Blast is making 14 drones. This is the worst possible time to be making drones. Yes, you're absolutely right about that. He needs to be spending his money and his supply into army. The supply lead for Begbie is ridiculous at 194 to 163. Three. Yeah, this Army 128 to 102 and the upgrade advantage. There's almost no way the Terran player is going to lose this fight. Yeah, this looks just like last game. The hitting with 2 2. Yeah, very good timing from Big B. There's just, it doesn't seem like there's enough. He's going to go for these cross of bile shots, doesn't get anything, and just loses this fourth. Yeah. I got to say, uh, Blast mixing in a couple of infestors here would definitely help him out. Fungal growth on the bio, but it's change. not going to matter. GG, Begbie takes a 2-0 victory in this best of five series. I think uh Blast needs to stop playing aggressive against him. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I feel like a lot of his frustrations come from him not being able to get that that early aggression doing any damage with it. When I feel like when he played against me at least, like our our games managed to go into the late game where I couldn't do enough damage because he was actually taking the time to just defend against my harassment, <laughs> go up to that fast hive, get to those ultras. And just use the most OP unit in the game. <laughs> <laughs> David, please. <laughs> I would argue the most OP unit in the game is the Mothership Corps. I would argue it's Tempest. What about the Marine? <laughs> uh, Marines are okay. Marines are fine. Marines are fine. Don't touch the Marines. They're a tier 3 unit. I agree on the Mothership Corps. Don't touch <laughs> the Marines. But yeah, MSC is kind of dumb. <laughs> what about Adepts? Aegon's not here to <laughs> Protoss. <laughs> but we're just bashing Protoss. <laughs> Have you guys had, ever had the discussion of whether it's adepts or adepts? Adepts? Adept. 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 They're adept at being adept. I don't know. I you gotta adapt to I the I say adept sometimes just because it's a little bit easier for me to say. Uh, you gotta, yeah, you gotta adapt adepts. to the adepts adept. to be a dope at the game. A dope? <laughs> <laughs> Adults. Alright, Begbie asking for right, uh, Begbie's going to get some water, and why not? He deserves it, playing two fantastic games. But that's, this means uh, he's giving his opponent time to plan out what he's going to do here on Frost. Now, Frost, as we all know, very heavily uh, favored for the Zerg player. If it's cross-spawn, very difficult for the Terran player to move across the map mm -hmm. uh, and apply damage like most Terran players like to do. If it's, uh, if it's vertical spawn or horizontal spawn, it's a little easier for the Terran player, but still very difficult nonetheless. Frost being just such a large map and so easy for Zerglings to run around and deal damage everywhere. Fun fact, because of the the chances of you not getting cross bond, this is probably Blast's least favorite map. Mm. <laughs> mm. But I know uh, Spectrum likes this map. Frost. Frost? It's really strong for Zerg. Mm -hmm. uh, how about Exarch? I don't like this map. Exarch doesn't like the map. <laughs> Interesting. We have two, like Zer two out of yeah. three Zergs who don't like this map. I like it because you're more likely to get. Uh, di um, a vertical or horizontal spawn. Yeah, well, I got cross spawned twice when I was playing against <laughs> this, this Xark and, and, and Spectrum. So, well, when I'm facing you, I like to have the uh, two-player map just so that way there's the I just potential for me to just like twelve <laughs> you or something like that. Oh, well, it happens. Well, like on Frost, you can do like fourteen, fourteen, stack the wings, and shock me. So while we're waiting for uh, game three to start, why don't we just uh, take this moment uh, to let everyone know what this is. This is the Florida Star Cup number one. Uh, it is being hosted. Is it's being hosted by Blast? Right. I guess so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Hosted. Hosted Blast, by Blast, Blast himself. Blast set it up and put the money down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, but Blast Dylan's definitely a big part. The, the home. <laughs> yes, Exarc. This is Exarc's home. It is we, awesome. We are doing this home story cup style. Uh, we got the couch. We've got the camera, we got the mic, uh, we, 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 we could probably be drinking more and getting <laughs> drunk and having a lot more fun, but uh, so far we haven't been doing that, and uh, I'm okay either way. I was drunk last time, that's why I lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Havoc uh, had a chance to tie it up 3-3, but unfortunately lost that last match 2-4, uh, getting eliminated. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we're hoping to have more of these... Um, I don't know how often he was aiming for, maybe like every six months, every maybe year. Maybe I'm, three or I'm four I'm not months. sure he didn't really mention, but yeah, I, but I, I would imagine we would be doing this again before mm. the end. 
before the end of the year. Of the year. Yeah. So uh, if you live in Florida and you would like to uh, participate in the Florida Star Cup series, please join the join the UCF Facebook page. Uh, uh, the UCF CSL SC2. Page. UCF CSL StarCraft 2 Facebook page, and uh, well, we can you we can actually we, we yeah. can go ahead and link that. Uh, in the chat, and then uh, please, you know, just follow us on Twitter if you want to let us know we're doing a good job, or if you want to let us know we're doing a shitty job. Either way, <laughs> sounds <feedback>. good. Even <laughs> even bad publicity is publicity, right? Yeah. Although you'll make me sad. How do I? How do I? Yeah, I think it's this one, right? Yes. All right. So this is going to be the page again. If you are in Florida, you don't even have to be in Florida. You can just drive down here from Georgia or from Louisiana if you're a really dedicated StarCraft fan, right? Or protest. That's and uh, <laughs> for those of you wondering about the uh, the the current standings and results, we have um, uh, I'm log in. Well, all right, I'm gonna log in, but you can't see my password, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. He thought as he put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Password. Okay, well. Oh right! It's, oh no no no! It's case sensitive. I forgot. It's case sensitive. Yeah, it's so awkward. <laughs> it's case sensitive. Boom! <laughs> I made this page myself. That's how badass I am. What a god! What a god! And here are the current standings results. We had Spectrum defeat XR three one advances to the winners finals. This is double elimination. Uh, Blast versus Begbie. Currently Begbie up two zero in this best of five series. And if he does win, he will advance to face Spectrum in the winners finals. I do believe we'll probably start with the losers round one though. Correct? I would imagine because Spectrum yes, has a because he needs to do report. Oh, that's true. Spectrum yeah. himself also has a tournament at eight p.m. So hope you guys tune into that. And s and support him. Actually, no. Then we'll yeah. lose the viewers. Yeah, Don't no, support him. Watch us. <laughs> Don't support him. Do I not might, go. I might consider forfeiting my spot in that tournament because there's no way I can play. Why not? Really? Why? Because I have to go home soon. So. Oh. oh. Okay. There you have it. Spectrum's gonna play his his matches uh, on on in this tournament, not the other crappy one. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Beg Beg B versus Blast and on. Frost, let's do some player introductions here from LOF. It is going to be the player down 0 2. Can he bring it back here on this Zerg favored map? Well, depending on spawn positions. It is going to be Blast. And great news for Begbie. <laughs> With the vertical spawn positions <laughs> representing the University of Florida up 2 0, we have Begbie. And there you have it. We were talking about this just now before the game started. We were talking about how if if the uh, if the Terran player gets a vertical or a horizontal spawn, uh, then it's actually more difficult for the Zerg player to win on this map. And it looks like Blast is not wanting to do a macro game. He is going gas pool right now and is drone scouting to find out which location uh, Bigby is in and is definitely going to be wanting to put on some very fast pressure. This is yeah. very good news for Blast because his very first scout with the drone, he's going to the right direction. He's going to see Begbie right away. He could even uh, steal the gas again and prevent any uh, higher tech, higher tier tech units from coming out. Yeah, Blast is going to want to go for some early aggression. He knows that he hates this map, honestly, and <laughs> the chances of him getting cross spawn are not really in his favor, One and three, as he yeah. finds out now... Is he going to take the gas? He is going to take the gas, and now Begbie once again forced to stay on one gas. He's done this three games in a row now. Yep, speed's coming now, though. Six lings on the way. Begbie opting for and a And the lings are out, and they're running straight for Begbie's base. Is Begbie going to have to... Is he going to get oh. that wall up in time? Begbie's placing the uh, he's he's on the low ground in the, in the one oh, game. Oh, for the first time ever, he places it on the low ground. In the one game that Blast is deciding to cheat. You know I'm going to make sure Camel is on gate game. Yep, okay. okay. All right. I don't want viewers to miss this. With that, with that drone coming in, this is actually the one time I wouldn't have put my base on the low ground. Exactly. You, you would. This is the one time he actually wants that high ground command center. Uh, but he does get a reaper out. He doesn't go for his usual marine build. He yeah, actually he gets the a reaper, reaper out. Too. Yeah, and keeping the reaper at home. Very good idea. It's almost as oh if Begbie God. knows what Blast is doing. Can he hear us? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope he can hear us. Definitely doesn't want to lose that ling. I, I think I think he can kind of like assume because you know Blast has said repeatedly he drone scouts to see if he's getting uh, reaper fallen 
Nobody Reaper owns on Frost, and so maybe has to be wondering why are Drone Scouting on that where Reaper Owen is really bad. And Link Speed has finished, he needs to get this Reaper up on the cliff, otherwise he's going to lose it. Now it's going to be up for Begbie to see if he can micro this properly. The Reaper down to less than half health, he needs to give it some time and let it heal up. The cancel that. on the command center yeah. does hurt the Terran player a lot. I should have waited just a little bit longer until that yeah. CC got to lower and the health. Mm -hmm. And the bailing nest is done for Blast, and he is going to start bailing production very shortly. Yep, there, there we go, six, six bailings. on the way, and they'd be having a good reaction, building these extra bunkers, but he also, there's he not going to have any units for them. He sees the uh, the, the bailings being morphed, so he, he absolutely needs to be ready for this. Okay. I think he's keeping his Reaper... Never mind. I would like to see him nade the, uh, the banelings. Yeah, mm -hmm. unless they jump over the wall, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, building these extra engineering bays, having a huge wall to protect his to protect his base. Um, let's see if the, <laughs> let's see how the focus fire goes. Oh, uh, but I don't think he's gonna be able to bust oh, through. Oh, <laughs> gets stuck. Very he's nice. he's not gonna be able to bust through. The wall is airtight. Wait, no, there's a. Small gap. There, there, I mean, there's a, there, there, actually, you're right. There is a small gap. Is he going to? Oh, he's yeah. actually supply block. Begbie is supply it. block. Okay. Yeah, the CC covers that gap. Okay. Begbie. So now, with uh, Begbie going for his natural in his base now, um, is he sending drones? Mode? Is this a? Uh, this has to be a misclick, right? Is he sending drones? He's I definitely mean, building misclick. drones, but 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 the drones should be rallied to the last yes. mineral. It was definitely. It seems well, like it was a mistake. decision from Blast. He morphed a bunch of banes and then canceled them. Yeah. And now he's morphing them again. He's purposely showing off these banelings, by the way. No, he's purposely doing it. He wants to. He wants them to believe that he's going to keep on doing aggression right now. But he's only building those first three. Uh, banelings. And the, the two drones retreat. They. That was definitely a misclick. And he'll be going for this hatch now. Unfortunately, Blast. though, what does Blast have that can fight against reactored Hellions? He's really behind. Yeah. Really, 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 really behind. Yeah, He's like the only damage he did was he canceled the CC and he got two supply depots. Yeah, I, I used to do this build, the, a similar build, not the same build, but a similar build in Hots on on a fortress and maps that were like big four player maps. Havoc knows. Yeah. I would go for, like, <laughs> I would go for fourteen fourteen, but I would take off of gas and expand behind it and just make a bunch of speed leads to cancel the CC and then drove my natural behind it. The yeah. only, and you know, I would put you really ahead. The yeah. only thing that I can think of that Blast can do is he could try to maybe take advantage of the fact that you can now drop off of just a hatchery tier. Uh, so he could wait until Begbie moves out with the reactor Hellions, leaving his base defenseless, and then he tries to drop a bunch of Banelings and Lings and try to kill a bunch of workers. That's definitely one way where he can get back ahead. Um, just any counterattack, um, if Begbie ever decides to move out. He still doesn't have a lot of units, but he's building up that production now. And Blast just staying at home, droning up, getting that natural. And uh, we do see the tech lab coming in. We do have a liberator oh, yeah, going towards really the good. natural of Blast. Uh, oh, that is the tech lab. Yeah, there's a Liberator sieged up at the natural of Blast right now. And uh, it looks like Blast was able to get it away in time. Looks like uh, only lost, only lost maybe one drone. But those oh, but uh, he's not going to want to lose these lings. Yeah, every unit counts. Right the now. reacted Hellions are out now, and if he's not careful, he's going to lose all these lings. Oh, what does Hellions. Blast have that could handle these Hellions? And honestly, he just needs to be building units right now, but it was... Terrible is he only has the the speedlings. He might need to build some banelings, but even then, oh, uh, even losing a w overlord, and now he's supply block can't get over the 44 supply limit. He's running his lings around, which uh, seems like a smart decision. But Begbie's not falling for it. He's staying at home. Yeah, yeah. last going for that counter attack, which is very intelligent. Building the spine crawlers at home, still droning, building a few banelings. He's gonna run right into an army of marines and aliens. Oh, oh my go. goodness! 16. 37 to supply to 66. He was not keeping an eye on those lings. Yeah. Oh no, Begbie playing this perfectly, deciding <laughs> to stay home. He probably knew that Blast was going to do some sort of side attack. Yeah, Begbie, he's very, very far ahead, and he's being very careful not to let Blast get back into this game. I, I don't see Blast coming back, honestly. I don't... I, it's going to be very difficult, obviously. Begbie needs to make some serious game-ending mistakes here for Blast to, any, to, to come in, come back into this. Uh, this Liberator's still alive and could even prevent this third base from coming up, but... Nah, shouldn't. Nope, the hatchery does go down, but Begbie sees it, yep. and he knows, okay, so you're trying to expand right now? That means I have a window the of opportunity to move out. Alone should be enough to take it down. And with a Reaper here supporting these Hellions. Could even, uh, could even drop the bomb.
Unfortunately, this is getting to be a very one-sided game right now. Oh my goodness, is he gonna lose even more links? What do you think Flash should be going for, Ash? Should he build more roaches so he can defend against this better? Get I, that third? I, I, I don't know, but perhaps hey, a Nidus? Perhaps a Nidus? <laughs> but it looks like... Uh, Spectrum saying this game is over, it, me saying this game is basically over. Uh, as you can see right now, Begby is just pressuring with Hellions. His entire army is still at home. I think he knows that maybe Blast could do some sort of Nidus also. So he just wants to be very safe and not move out until he absolutely has to. Because right now he's forced to cancel on the third, he's got map control, he's he's just completely controlling every aspect of this game. Yeah, doubling his supply now, Blast just, he's stuck on these two bases. Doesn't really, he does not have the units to be able to push out right now, he can't spread his creep, he can't get his queens to build that third. And Begbie is now going to be landing his third soon. Plus one, plus one is about to finish for the Terran player. Combat shields on the way. Stim already finished. This is looking terrible right now for Blast. There just seems to be no way for him to get back into this game. The supply lead is just going to keep plummeting out of control in Begbie's favor the longer this game lasts. And yeah, I guess on two bases, getting double engineer, good double Evo chamber, and getting that lair now. Maybe hoping for some tech advantage of some sort. Is he gonna, maybe blind sign with Mutas? Is he no. gonna drop is he gonna drop the creep? No, there's not done. Is he gonna drop the creep? Oh, he doesn't drop the creep. He's done a great job of dropping the creep two games so far. And yeah, and the Reaper still preventing. Yeah, we have yeah, the third has... orbital landed for for Beg before the third is even start for blast. Which just shows yeah. how ahead the Terran player is. 118 supply, 57 plus one upgrades have finished. And once he finishes his armory, well, he doesn't have an armory. Once he gets an armory, he'll be able to get plus two two upgrades to the plus one one that has just started for blast. And it does seem like these these links are probably going to not make it back home with the Hellions and Marines here. Oh, actually, he runs off to the side. Okay. Oh, and he drops the creep. But it still lands. <laughs> but it still lands. <laughs> And now Blast finally starting his third base. He's still stuck at less than 60 supply and even losing more links on top of this. Every unit counts at this stage of the game and he just cannot afford to lose anything anymore. Yeah, Roach Worm finally going down, building that third hatch, getting that infestation pit, maybe trying to go for a fast hive? Yeah, I, I think like he just basically needs to like rush hive and try to get out ultras with kindness. I mean, but is Begbie going to let him do that because he's at 144 supply i'm wondering why begby still hasn't moved out we've seen from we've seen this from him before where he just kind of stays at home and plays very defensive and sometimes plays a little too defensive and actually allows his opponent to get back into the game he definitely doesn't want to uh just lose this game by accident he doesn't want to make a huge mistake that armor being a little late maybe kind of slowing him down because he's not going to have that 2-2 ready but he's now it looks like he's going to move out now and put on some pressure oh he's definitely going to get there even before the ultraless cavern can get up oh he's going for swarm hosts oh, fuck my mind it's hey i mean <laughs> and the hellions tanking all the baneling damage i guess you just need to try weird stuff i mean uh, i mean there's just there's yeah. just no way these these are speedless banelings right now against plus 1-1, one, one, Combat Shield, Marine, and Hellbat with Sea Alright, Swarm Hosts are out! Alright, the Swarm it. Hosts are out! Let's oh, see it! Man. The Swarm Hosts are out! Do you oh. even know how to control those? How do you do it? <laughs> no, 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 no. The Swarm Hosts are out, uh, they're just and gonna die. The locusts. They're just gonna die. These are Marines. Oh. These are Stim Marines. And there's that confirmation that and Swarm now Hosts he needs are still useful. <laughs> now, now he needs to wait for the Swarm uh, Hosts cooldown. It's just not gonna happen. 146 supply to 80 supply. Stimming in here, yeah. kiting everything. If Blas had burrowed banelings, then maybe good, good job. GG 3-0 victory. Begby is going to clinch the the victory here in this best of five series, and he is going to advance into the winners finals to face Spectrum. Uh, if you guys missed it, we already played match. One.